Boo! Did I scare you? Probably I didn't, so don't answer that. The idea for this video was given to me for free by a nice, nice lady in a group chat that I'm in where someone invited people to like Halloween party or something and she sent a giant message talking about how Halloween is demonic and satanic and bad, don't celebrate it and everything like that. The only good thing about that is that to this message there were a lot of poop emojis reacting to it. So, we're not doomed yet. But I decided I want to celebrate Halloween even more. I don't have any Halloween decorations because I don't want to spend money on that. But I will crave a pumpkin, maybe. Welcome to Spooktober. If you don't know what it is, it's basically you have one film per day from October the 1st until October the 31st. And that's what I did. It's now October 27th and I haven't watched all the films because I couldn't decide on the films so I added too many films. I have over 40 and I skipped like half of the days I think. But it still was fun and I want to share this experience with you and maybe you can share your Spooktober films if you participated or if you plan to participate like next year. I am suggesting to do that. It's really fun. I have split it into two categories. The first one and the most boring one is the films that I haven't watched yet. Unfortunately, The Birds, 1963 by Alfred Hitchcock. I love Psycho, 1960 by him. I even have a poster up my wall in my bedroom, which means that it's serious. I don't know anything about the film The Birds and I don't know anything about the films that I haven't watched because I want to know nothing before I watch the film. Like, I don't want to know names of the characters, the bloodline, what it is about. The most things I'm kind of interesting to, to know is like the, who is the director, what are the actors, and that's it. Blade 1998 by Steven Norrington. I know, I know, it's not exactly a horror film, but it has horror elements. I also haven't watched this film as every film in this category. It's just popped out while I was googling like horror films, spooktober films, and I decided, you know what, I've never seen it, why not? I know three things about this film. It's about a guy, Blade. He kills vampires, I think. And it's a Marvel film. That's I 100% sure. I stopped watching Marvel films because I got so sick of them. What's the point of watching Marvel film after the end game? I don't know. But She-Hulk, 10 out of 10. You know what, I should have watched She-Hulk for the whole Spooktober. It fits the vibe, it is scary. The Silence of the Lambs, 1991 by Jonathan Dini. Yes, I still haven't watched this masterpiece of the film. I'm really excited to see, even though I know almost everything about this film, because it's everywhere. It's iconic, it's... everyone knows about it, but I don't know. I never... for some reason I never watched it, and it's weird, and I'm going to, and I'm really excited about it. Children of the Core, 1984 by Fritz Kirsch. It is one of the films that I know I won't get, get scared by because it's old, it's 1984 and every old film has a curse of being not really scary in modern day but it's iconic so I will watch it mostly because I'm interested in the plot line and what it is about Poltergeist 1982 by Tobe Hooper same like with Children of Corn it's iconic hard a lot of things about it but I probably won't get scared. The Amityville Horror, 1979 by Stuart Rosenberg. I just Google horror films, that's what popped out. Don't know anything about it. The Hills Have Eyes, 1977 by Wes Craven. I'm 90% sure that's a slasher. Slasher film is a genre of horror most popular from the late 50s to the early 90s, defined by its use of generally mass killer harassing and murdering groups of people. Basically a lot of blood and a lot of gory things, a lot of killings in the most brutal way as possible. I suspect it being like Bong Torn and Texas Chainsaw Massacre, middle of nowhere, teenagers and young adults running around trying to save themselves. Mm, probably like that. The Sixth Sense, 1999 by Night Shyamalan. I still can't forgive Shyamalan for what he did to The Last Airbender. <laughs> it was awful. I watched it when I was a child, after I watched the TV show. It was such a disappointment. I still can't forgive, can't forget, will never forget. If you know anything about Shyamalan, you know that at the end of the film, he loves to 
do 180 and go like, everything is not what it seems. Bam, look at this. I don't even want to talk about Shyamalan. So I know the biggest thing about The Sixth Sense. I know the biggest spoiler. I won't say it in case you didn't see it and I want to... I don't want to spoil it for you. I just want to get this film off my chest. Sleepy Hollow 1999 and Dark Shadows 2012 by Tim Burton. It truly isn't scary films, but Tim Burton vibe fits the Halloween vibe. And on that note, I also want to add that I was really disappointed when I was googling Halloween films, horror films for Spooktober, and they were giving me not scary things at all, like Coraline and Sleepy Hollow. Both of them not scary. Good Caroline is a really good film, but Sleepy Hollow and Dark Shadows haven't watched them now. But it's not scary. Tim Burton is not doing horror films, it's not what I was searching for. Nosferatu 1922 by Murnau. I know a lot of you thinking, well, you talk about how you want to be scared, how are you gonna get scared by a film that is a hundred years old? And to that, I will answer. Well, I won't get scared. Mostly, I want to get scared. But I also want to see the films, Halloween films, scary horror films that I haven't watched that are iconic. And I think Nosferatu is one of them. Uh, if you didn't know, Nosferatu is about a vampire, I think. What is happening in the film? I don't know. The only bummer of this film is that it's a silent film. And through my two years education, I've realized I can't watch a silent film. It's painful. Three minutes into the film and I'm already distracted. Can't finish it. And no, random piano sounds doesn't count. I need people talking. I don't know how this will go. Hopefully I will finish it and I will actually enjoy it. But 1922, ugh. Frankenstein 1931 by James Well and Young Frankenstein 1974 by Mel Brooks. Same as with Nosferatu, I'm mostly interested in knowing about Frankenstein. I know the story, how Frankenstein, you know, came to be and everything, but I just want to see for myself. 1931 means they have sound in the film. And I checked, film has sound. People are talking there. Thank God. Child's Play 1988 by Tom Holland. No, not this one, this one. A struggling single mother unknowingly gives her son a doll imbibed with a serial killer's consciousness. I have watched Child's Play when I was young, but I don't know which part because it is a franchise. And you will hear the word franchise a lot in this video, trust me. I won't get scared, even when I was a child, I, I was, wasn't scared by like a, a live doll. I mean, Annabelle from Annabelle the film, she is a scary doll, but Chucky, he's more of a goofball. I'm more wanna like, oh, Chucky, stop it, put the knife down. Mostly in this uh, list, you will see that I only have first parts of everything, like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Child's Play and everything, because some franchises have like six parts. I don't wanna see six parts. And if a film has six in a title, it probably means it's not a good one. So I just wanna know the first parts. Here I will give you just a list of the films that I don't know anything about, so I can't even put like two cents about them. Night of the Living Dead, 1968 by George Romero. The Thing from Another World, 1951 by Christian Newby and Howard Hawks. The Omen, 1976 by Richard Donner. I Know What You Did Last Summer, 1997 by Jim Gillespie. It, 1990, which turns out is a TV show. Have you seen The Clown from 1990? It's again a goofball. It Follows 2015 by David Robert Mitchell. I have high hopes for this film, which is bad. Anytime I have high hopes for the film, it never ends good. But it's modern, I haven't watched it, so I hopefully will get like scared, scared. I will feel fear through the whole film, hopefully. And now we go to the category of films that I have watched. Hereditary 2018 by Ari Aster. A grieving family is haunted by tragic and disturbing occurrences. Even how the person that they're grieving has died is already disturbing enough. A little spoiler for you here. To give you a little more information on the film, it has like witchcrafty, satanic things in it. So if you're interested in that, you should watch it. Before watching this film, I've heard a lot of people either saying, ooh, this is such a great masterpiece, ooh, such a woo and that and good and everything. And other people were saying, oof, 
bit, I didn't like it. Personally, it was okay. I wasn't scared like I wished to be, but it was interesting. And an end of the film was a little too slow for me. I would have, you know, sped it up, cut some things. Toni Collette is amazing. She just chef kiss. I love her. Halloween 1978 by John Carpenter. 15 years after murdering his sister on Halloween night 1963, Michael Myers escapes from a mental hospital and returns to the small town of Haddonfield, Illinois to kill again. The film was not scary at all. It is a really good example of a slasher if you kind of, you know, want to know the vibe. This is the vibe. Maybe me not liking Halloween has to do with me accidentally watching Halloween part whatever Blood Evil Returns in theaters a couple years ago. It was bad because again it was like Halloween part 5, 4, Michael Returns, whatever. So it was bad, it was boring. So maybe that memory subconsciously fucked me watching Halloween part 1, the original. I don't know, but I wasn't scared, it wasn't eerie, it wasn't like ooh. I was just like mm. Okay. Jaws, 1975 by Steven Spielberg. When a killer shark unleashes chaos on a beach community of Cape Cod, it's up to a local sheriff, a marine biologist, and an old sea farer to hunt the beast down. Do you know the meaning behind summer blockbuster? But do you know what's the first summer blockbuster? It's this. It's Jaws. Steven Spielberg literally created summer blockbuster. The film is amazing. In a couple of parts of the films you can kind of get that the shark is a little fakey the film is still really really good it's not the film like annabelle or conjuring when you like oh i don't want to go to the kitchen i don't want to go anywhere I'll, <laughs> I'll put on all, all the lights and just go in my bed and don't sleep it's not that it more um, about being interested in the story actors are amazing marine biologist is a really hot actor the shark everything the sound well the sound became a little you know viral through the years so when i've heard it you know i already seen it on like tiktoks comedy tiktoks so it was really was a little ruined but it's not the jaws fault it's not steven spielberg's fault it will give you the i should double check the water before going in because it is scary it has blood in it by the way in most of these films it has like blood violence killings Jaws, I really re recommend watching. It is really good. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, 1974 by Tobe Hooper. Five friends head out to rural Texas to visit the grave of a grandfather. On the way, they stumble across what appears to be a deserted house, only to discover something sinister within. Something armed with a chainsaw. They all try to not get killed brutally by a leather face. It is a slasher film and it is a franchise. I'm not a big fan of slashers, but it's an iconic film and right before watching this film I saw Quentin Tarantino say that this film is a perfect film. Very few perfect movies and one of them is Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yes. And, and it was a little too slow for me, but everything else, it was good. Again, it would never be my favorite film because it's a slasher and I don't think I have a slasher that I love really much. But it's a good film. It has a lot of like gore and blood and people suffering. So if you're not into that, don't watch slasher films. Wrong Charm 2003 by Rob Schmidt. Chris and a group of five friends are left stranded deep in the middle of the woods after their cars collide. As they venture deeper into the woods, they face an uncertain and blood curdling fate. Also slasher and also I think franchise. It is similar to Texas Chainsaw Massacre. These people also in the middle of nowhere, in the woods, they can't call anyone, can't get help because it's in the middle of nowhere. It has a few differences, uh, obviously. I liked Texas Chainsaw Massacre better than Wong Chan. Wong Chan, I just felt a little bored while watching it. And while watching it, I remembered that I've seen this film. I just forgot it because it's a little boring. Hellraiser, 1987 by Clive Barker. A woman discovers the new resurrected, partially formed body of her brother-in-law. She starts killing for him to revitalize his body so he can escape the demonic beings that are pursuing him after he escaped their sadistic underworld. I had high hopes for this film. I 
really thought I would get really scared and I would feel fear throughout the whole movie, but I didn't. It's a good film, also a franchise. I told you you will hear that word from me many, many times. I like the film very much. It is interesting. Actors are playing really good. The story is really interesting and good. But it's not scary and that's what I want. But I can't get it. But it's a good film. I recommend watching it. Interesting one. Scream 1996 by Wes Craven. A year after the murder of her mother, a teenage girl is terrorized by a masked healer who targets her and her friends by using scary movies as a part of a deadly game. It was not scary at all, but it was a breath of fresh air. It is the first film to ever have characters in a horror film that know about other horror films. If my teacher is right, it is the first one to do it. The first dialogue, I think, is what's your favorite scary film? What's your favorite scary movie? Which is so cool and fun and interesting and not like other films. I'm pretty sure you can't get scared by a slasher. It's more of like entertainment thing. Right here, right now, I want to rant about Scream 6. <laughs> yes, it is a franchise, again. I will be honest, I only watched Scream 6 because of Jenna Ortega. I really liked her, I was like, I, I, you know, I wanna see what else she does, and I, and I saw it. And oh my god, oh my god, could you imagine, just imagine, seven young adults or teenagers, I don't know their ages, and one perpetrator in the flat, flat, so it's in a building with neighbors, up, down, left, right, neighbors, and it's evening. Or maybe even night, so most people are at home. Seven people against one person. What are the chances of seven people surviving? 100%? 98? 90? If they are like asleep? No, it's like 70. Seven people against one perpetrator, some of them die. If you are thinking, oh, it's some elaborate plan, it's all thought out, no, everyone just acts stupid everyone acts like they're five ten max and that's an insult to ten year olds then there is a chasing again in the flat with neighbors and neighbors never hear anything this film takes place in New York maybe people in New York just don't care about any noise coming from any apartment regardless in the chain scene a woman is chased by a screen and this chain scene looks like if the music was different or the stupidity level was just a little too high i would genuinely think it's the scary movie it's that stupid they run around the chair that they like they're in some parody they stumble on nothing and fall and they <laughs> Another certain thing. A man is stabbed in the chest, lung, uh, shoulder area, and you think he's gonna die. They left him there for like 20 minutes. By the way, spoilers, sorry. 20 minutes later, end of the film, he's alright. Not like perfect. Surviving after 20 minutes, bleeding out. Scream 1, amazing. Scream 6, is the film that should have been aborted. Ghostbusters, 1984 by Ivan Reitman. Three parapsychologists forced out of the university funding set up shop as a unique ghost removal service in New York City, attracting frightened yet skeptical customers. It is not scary at all. It's not a horror film. It's a really good film. It's really interesting. It's fun, but sometimes it's a little, a little eerie. It has everything. It's an iconic film that I'm glad I watched. Yes, it is a franchise also. Who could have guessed? I only watched Ghostbusters this and Ghostbusters Woman Edition. Um, it was so bad I fell asleep. Not even joking. 10 minutes in the film I was like, mm, no. And I have no regrets about that. Pet Cemetery, 1989 by Mary Lambert. After tragedy strikes, a grieving father discovers an ancient burial ground behind his home with the power to raise the dead. The first adaptation of Stephen King's 1983 novel of the same name. This film is intended to be scary. 
a horror film. And I wasn't scared. I was interested. It was a really good film. And the saddest thing about this is I remember being a child and watching, I don't know what part, also a franchise, with a dog. I only remember the scene with a dog. Dog comes home already, you know, fucked. A little spoilers here. Dog is fucked. Dog is scary. And I was scared. I was watching it like this because I didn't want to see, you know, the whole thing. I was like, oh my god, it's scary. But now it isn't. Maybe this was ruined by me knowing what the film is about. Maybe it was ruined by me watching the reboot. Yes, it has a reboot a couple years ago and the reboot was really bad and stupid. I don't know. I just want to get scared. I want to feel fear. I want to have the adrenaline. I want to go like, oh, I don't want to see. I want this. But I can't get this. In 2017 by Andy Muschietti. Only the first part, the second one sucks. In the summer of 1989, a group of bullied kids band together to destroy a shape-shifting monster, which disguises itself as a clown and preys on children of Derry, their small main town. I watched it when it premiered in theater, and it was scary. The first scene with the sewer, it was really scary. Skarsgård, I think his name is. He plays really well. Even if I see his clown, him playing this clown in the middle of the day, I will still get scared. Hopefully, when I rewatch it, it will still be scary, but at least it will be interesting because I remember this film being really, really good. Annabelle 2014 by John R. Leonetti. A couple begins to experience terrifying supernatural occurrences involving a vintage doll shortly after their home is invaded by satanic cultists. Annabelle creation 2017 by David Sandberg. Twelve years after the tragic death of their little girl, a doll maker and his wife welcome a nun and several girls from a shuttered orphanage into their home, where they become the target of the doll Marcus possessed creation, Annabelle. Both of these films I watched, I remember it being really good. Annabelle creation actually scared me more and I liked this film more than I liked first Annabelle. When I first saw Annabelle creation, I got really scared. I felt fear through my whole body. Then I watched it again and it wasn't scary almost at all. But now I kind of forgot the film, so maybe I will get scared like in the first time. Ring 2002 by Gore Verbinski. A journalist must investigate a mysterious videotape which seems to cause the death of anyone one week to the day after they view it. I recently, a month ago, watched the original Ringo 1998 by Hideo Nakata. It is the original one. Ring 2002, it's like an adaptation from the US. I really like the Japan one, really good film, excellent one, but I didn't get scared, like only the last, last, last scene in the film, last like seconds of the film, it was like, Ew. so I'm planning on watching Ring from the US, I remember it also being not that scary, we'll see, we'll see, Coraline 2009 by Henry Selick, an adventurous 11 year old girl, finds another world that is strangely idealized version of her frustrating home, but it has sinister secrets. A classic, iconic classic. Yes, it is not a horror film, but it's really good and it fits the vibe of Halloween, Spooktober, October in general. Excited to rewatch it again. I think everyone has watched, but if you haven't, really recommend it. It's not scary, it doesn't have blood, anything. A Series of Unfortunate Events, 2004 by Brett Silverling. When a massive fire kills their parents, three children are delivered to the custody of a cousin and stage actor Count Olaf, who is secretly plotting to steal their parents' vast fortune. This is the biggest mistake. And let me explain. It's a film for teenagers and children. While I was googling spooktober films, films for Halloween, this popped up and I remember it being my one of the favorite films of my childhood. So I thought, oh my god, a perfect time to rewatch it. I did. It was bad. It was bad. When I was a child, I thought it was a masterpiece. Now I think it's stupid sometimes, it's sometimes boring. It's not it. It felt like watching a different film. Listen, never, you hear me, never we watch your childhood films. Sometimes they are still really good, but sometimes 
Sometimes they are not. The Conjuring, 2013 by James Wan. Paranormal investigators Anne and Lorraine Warren work to help a family terrorized by a dark presence in their farmhouse. The Conjuring 2, 2016 by James Wan. Anne and Lorraine Warren travel to North London to help a single mother raising four children alone in a house plagued by a supernatural spirit. Both of these films I have watched previously and it's the same with Annabelle. I am hoping to get scared as the first time. But I have a feeling, and I remember re-watching these films, they are not good the second, third, fourth time. They are not good. First time, really scary. Then, less and less and less, less scary. But the plotline, the characters, acting, visual effects, everything is top-notch. Jennifer's Body, 2009 by Karen Kusama. A newly possessed high school cheerleader turns into a succubus who specializes in killing her male classmates. Can her best friend put an end to the horror? Should I even say anything about this film? I think everyone know this film. Everyone know the iconic scene with the lighter. You won't feel fear. They have a couple of booze in there, but it's more of a fun night, fun evening. It's good. Friday the 13th, 1980 by Sean Cunningham. A group of camp counselors trying to reopen a summer camp called Crystal Lake, which has a green past a stunt by a mysterious killer. Slasher again, franchise again. I haven't rewatched it for Spooktober yet, but I remember watching and it was just good. It's a good film. Nothing to say more. Evil Dead 1981 by Sam Raimi. Five friends travel to a cabin in the woods where they unlawfully release flesh possessing demons. I watched it a long time ago. It was interesting and it was cool, scary at times, I think. What I want to see more is not about the Evil Dead original, because you know, what can I say about the original film? It's good, everything's good, everything's fine. But there is a film called Evil Dead Rise 2024, no, 23, I'm sorry. And it's so bad. It has the different plotline, but the same thing. People accidentally unleash flesh-possessing demons, right? Scream 6 and Evil Dead Rise are kind of similar in the sense they are boring. People are stupid there because everything is just fine in the film. It became boring at the end and they took everything from the original. Instead of being kind of unique and something new, they did it plain. Eh, it was bad. EO4 Evil Dead Rise 2023. Alien 1979 by Ridley Scott. The crew of a commercial spacecraft encounters a deadly life form after investigating an unknown transmission. I recently watched it for Spooktober, like recently, a few days ago. And oh my god, I love this film so much, even though it's old. 1979. The alien itself, the bloodline, the special, it takes place on a spacecraft, in the space, and on another planet. Everything looks so fucking good. Alien is perfect. Can't explain the feelings I have in me. It's so fucking good. It is also a franchise. We don't talk about any of this shit. This doesn't exist. They have Sigourney Weaver. That's extra like 10 points. The Shining, 1980 by Stanley Kubrick. A family heads to an isolated hotel for the winter where a sinister presence influences the father into violence while his psychic son sees horrific forebodings from both past and future. As with a lot of films in this category, I haven't rewatched it for Spooktober yet, but I watched it some time ago. And it is a masterpiece. As with Alien, everything is so good. You can't add anything or extract anything because it's it's perfect for me. It's so perfect. Not a horror film in a standard Annabelle Conjuring way, but Jack Nicholson's stare shivers down my spine. Shivers. It's it's a masterpiece. I don't want to ruin this film and Elliot by saying too many words, which I think I've already done, and I'm so sorry for this film. Monster House 2006 by Jill Cannon. Three teens discover that their neighbor's house is really a living, breathing, scary monster. Another childhood masterpiece that was ruined by me watching it and not being a child. It was a bit boring. Overall, okay. Paranormal Activity 2007 by Oren Pelly. After moving into a suburban home, a couple becomes increasingly disturbed by a nightly demonic presence. Eh, I mean, it's okay. It's not my cup of tea. 
which is weird because I love found footage genre like the Blair Witch Project 1999 by Dane Morick and Eduardo Sanchez and What We Do in the Shadows 2014 by Gemma and Clement and Taika Waititi. I love these films but for some reason Paranormal Activity that just doesn't give it to me. It's just okay for like one time. Silent Hill 2006 by Christoph Gans. A woman, Rose, goes on a search for her adopted daughter within the confines of a strange, desolated town called Silent Hill. I watched it when I was 13 the first time. I got so scared. It was in the middle of the day. I was in a house with a bunch of relatives, but I was so scared. If I had seen it at night, I think I would have been traumatized by now. I rewatched it and I got bored by like minute five. And I stopped watching it. But maybe, hopefully this time, it will be different. But maybe it will. Midsommar 2019 by Ari Aster. A couple travels to Northern Europe to visit a rural hometown fabled Swedish Midsummer Festival. What begins as an idyllic retreat quickly devolves into an increasingly violent and bizarre competition at the hands of a pagan cult. People got so hot about this film. I remember people saying, oh my god, the best film, oh my god, masterpiece, oh my god, this, oh my god, that. But for me, it's just good because main character Danny has a boyfriend and he's such a piece of shit that he ruins the whole film as my teacher said he's such a pathetic piece of shit he treats her so bad she should leave but she's not leaving throughout the whole fucking film she is with him so that makes her pathetic because that's how the film works if you take two characters and one of them is pathetic and one of them is your main character my character shouldn't be you know dealing with a pathetic person that makes him pathetic you know, that's how he says he works. I just hate the guy so much. He's so pathetic, so bad, such a piece of shit. Anytime he's on the screen, I just want to punch the screen. And not in a good way, like he's like a main villain. He is not. He's not like Darth Vader. He's just so pathetic and always whining and always... So, 2004 by James Wan. Two strangers awaken in a room with no recollection of how they got there and soon discover they are pawns in a deadly game perpetrated by a notorious serial killer. Also a franchise. I'm gonna get to the spoilers of this first film. Listen man, I don't give a fuck that you have a fucking cancer. Why the fuck are you the one who's being like, oh, you don't appreciate your life enough. Mm. And you do? while killing people and don't say oh i don't kill people they are killing themselves i'm giving them the opportunity to escape with what one leg i don't want both of my legs if i have two of them i want to have that's there's a reason i have two of let on my legs okay second of all there is a woman who escapes successfully the the thing you know the game she won she escaped right and the reason she was in the game is because she's a drug addict and you know drug addicts don't appreciate life like you're gonna die because you want drugs whatever and you know says like oh i don't want to do drugs anymore do you know how addiction works no i'll explain when something traumatic happens like almost dying and doing something horrible to someone you know to live that gives you more reasons to use the drugs traumatic things increase the level of addiction the want to do it you want to escape you doing drugs because you want to escape something you have the worst thing in your life happening to you surely you want to escape it but no she's not a drug addict anymore she realized things i would not realize shit if I won't saw, so I hate the main um, evil guy. I hate him. He's the what? Fuck this guy. Fuck this game. Yeah, and I'm not really a fan of watching people cut themselves. Ugh. But that's like a minor thing. I can deal with that. But the main fucking evil who speaks a lot. Well, not a lot, but he he does soap on his mouth, unfortunately, and I don't like it. But the games are kind of, at least in the first film, I don't remember the second, the rest of the franchise, they were kind of clever. I was like, hmm, 
Ooh, didn't see that. Mm -hmm. The Thing 1982 by John Carpenter. A research team in Antarctica is hunted by a shape-shifting alien that assumes the appearance of its victims. Very good film, very interesting. A couple effects are a little bit out of date. Sometimes you watching it and you're like, oh, that's a puppet. But that's a really good puppet one. At least you're like, oh, wow. The plot line is really interesting. You won't get bored, but you won't feel fear. At least I didn't. But it was really, 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 really interesting. Final Destination, 2000 by James Wong. Alex Browning is among a group of high school students on a trip to Europe. He suddenly has a premonition the plane will crash. He screams to warn the others, but is thrown off of the plane and the plane crashes after they get off. Surprisingly, I liked it a lot. I thought it would be kind of boring. It wouldn't be that interesting because it is not that scary. This film surprised me and I really enjoyed it. I was like, you know, on the edge of my seat going, oh, what's, cool? what's, what's gonna happen, what's gonna happen? Some couple of things were a little stupid. It is also a franchise. But mostly it was interesting. I, I was like pleasantly surprised. And that's it for all the films that I haven't watched or have watched and I have more than half more and it's 27th of october yeah i probably won't finish all of this but maybe i'll either move it to spooktober next year either i'll just finish it in november even though i'm from that people who like oh first of november here's my christmas tree first of november everything is decorated i'm in the search of really 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 horrifying horror films really scary i want to feel fear please please do, you know, leave them in the comments or somewhere. I need them. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, do whatever you want. Comment, subscribe, like, share, whatever. Thank you and goodbye.